Hey, hey, this is His Word Unveiled, and today we are talking about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we have talked in the last like four videos about the crucifixion, and wow, it was emotional, and wow, it was just heavy, and just coming to grips with what really took place, what Jesus Christ gave up, went through, and how He so willingly laid down His life. He gave His life. He gave it. It wasn't taken from him. He gave it. So today is the start of a few chapters where we are hitting the resurrection of this powerful, amazing, abundant, right now, right here, present life that we have because of the death on, because of Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection. That resurrection power is present and active in our life right now. It's for us right now that we can live abundantly and freely in Him, in His grace that He just gives and gives and gives and calls us into more and more and more again and again and again. So let's get to our reading. Let's start talking. Let's start praising. Let's start pressing in. So excited for what God has for us and how He's going to take us and lead us further and further into this truth. I pray that this truth seriously wakes us up in a new way. Like I get, we all talk like, yes, you know, praise the Lord. He died for us. He rose again. I want it so much more. I want to understand. I want to see. I want to, I just want to tap into what this really is and what it really means. Like we can get so much, but I want Father to take us deeper. I want His Spirit to really just reveal to us today for something to go off in us, something to shift and be stirred up where we see it and we understand it, we get it on a deeper level. That's, I want that. I never want to get to the point like, yes, this is great. We're there. We've arrived. We got it. We understand it. No, there's always more. There's absolutely always more, and I want that more today. I want, I want us to just be be awakened to this, to, to the power in this, to the depths of this, to where God wants to take us in this and in, in understanding this. I, I wanna I wanna see. I wanna I wanna be more aware. I wanna recognize what what maybe I haven't before. So that's what I'm after today. So join me. Let's do this together. What we are hitting today is Matthew chapter 28. And then also Mark chapter 16. So both of those chapters, they're fairly short. So, so good. Let's do this. Matthew 28, Mark 16, get away with the Lord. Connect with him. Meet with him. Let's chew on this for a while. Take as long as you need. Whatever the Lord is calling you into to just how to meet with him and when to stop and when to pray, when to just let it sink in, when to keep pushing on. Let's just listen to God. Let's be obedient and let's be so truly blessed with the way that he is going to meet with us today through these amazing passages of scripture. So Matthew 28, Mark 16, do your thing and read. I'm going to pray. Then we'll walk this thing out together like we always do. So here we go. <sighs> Lord, we thank you for your cross and we thank you. We thank you for your heart. We thank you for the resurrection power that you have given us full access into and to use and to walk out in and to just be real with. Lord, we don't want to take this lightly. We don't want to see this as just something fun and great and nice to have. Lord, I want this to change us. I want this to drive us on. I want this to lead us into things that we never thought were possible, never thought that we could do. Lord, I pray that your movement just lead us on, just move us. I pray that we are so, so overwhelmed and awakened to the power of your resurrection in our lives. Lord, just, just take off, just blow this thing up with so much truth. I pray that we are truly overwhelmed. Lord, just take over, just just invade, just come, just be, just move, just, we love you, Lord. We so, so love you, and, and we are just giving you the stage. We are giving this, this time to you. Lord, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's do this. Matthew chapter 28. Okay, now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. So, We've been hearing a lot about this Mary Magdalene so much. She has just mentioned all the time about just remaining close to the Lord and coming from just a, a crazy, um, crazy, crazy past. We're going to hit more about Mary in um, chapter Mark. But we see that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary 
came to look at the grave. So they're coming to visit Jesus. He has been um, in, in the grave, buried in this tomb, has, has been dead um, for these days. This is the day of his resurrection, though. So they are coming to the grave. Verse 2 says, And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. So this angel came down from heaven. It, was, it says that there was a severe earthquake, this rumbling like crazy, and this angel rolled away the stone. So this angel is now sitting on this stone when Mary Magdalene and this other Mary um, approach the tomb. Verse 3, and his appearance, this angel's appearance, was like lightning and his clothes as white as snow, like lightning, like glowing, like the, the flash of lightning, that that crazy blinding, here's this angel, like lightning, clothes as white as snow. Verse 4, the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. So they became like dead men, meaning they probably just totally blacked out in this fear, passed out in shock, in um, in fear. <laughs> okay, verse five. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. Then he says in verse six, he is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come see the place where he was lying. So he says, look, he's not here. He's risen just like he told you, that he would rise again just like what he said. He's not here. He has risen. Come look. He's not here. Then verse 7, the angel says, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Okay, so Galilee. Let's talk about Galilee. Now, Jesus told them about his rising again and told him that he would go ahead of them to Galilee. So back in Matthew chapter 26, verse 32 is where this was very, very specific. Um, let's see here. Okay, so this is after the Last Supper. And we see in verse 30 of Matthew chapter 26, it says, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night, for it was written, I will strike down the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. So Jesus says, This is what it was written. You guys are all going to fall away because it says, When I die, you all are going to scatter. Then he says in verse 32, But after I have been raised. So right there, he says, I'm going to die, but I'm going to raise again. There's going to be a resurrection power that's going to be released in and from my tomb and I'm going to raise to life. He says, after I have been raised, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. So this angel then is telling Mary Magdalene and this other Mary, go quickly and tell the disciples. He has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. And he, and he tells Mary to tell them, go there and you'll see him. So there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Now, just this understanding of Galilee, let's just do a quick like recap of this. So map of Galilee. We have um, Galilee being up top. Then we have Samaria. Then we have Judea, which is where Jerusalem um, was. So so Galilee up top, Judea on the, the bottom. So let's go over kind of Judea, the main places of where, you know, what we're familiar with, what we've heard even in the New Testament with the life of Jesus in Judea. We have um, Jerusalem, Gethsemane, uh, Gethsemane being the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus went to to pray. Um, we have Bethany where the, the home of Lazarus and Mary Magdalene and um, Martha all lived there in Bethany. Also Bethlehem where Jesus was born. All this happened in Judea. So Jesus went ahead of them to Galilee. So the angel is saying, there you will see Jesus. Now in Galilee... This is the place where like the miracles were like crazy. So we have Cana, which was the first miracle where Jesus turned the water into wine. So Cana is up there in um, Galilee. We also have Nazareth, Jesus of um, Nazareth. We have Capernaum. All of these places were just prominent in his miracles, in these healings, in in the things that he was doing, and healing the blind and um, healing the lame and casting out 
you know, these demons, all of these things happened in Galilee. So Jesus says that I'm going ahead of you after I'm, after I've been raised, I'm going ahead of you into Galilee. And the angel is telling them, you're going to see him in Galilee. Why not Galilee where all of these other miracles took place, where Jesus was just on it, in it, in Cana, Nazareth, um, Capernaum, where, where most of those, we, we just heard so many things about those cities and Jesus doing just miraculous work. So why not? Why would they not see him there? Why wouldn't that be the main place where they would see Jesus? This like, like greatest of all miracles, Jesus being raised from the dead. That's crazy. That's beautiful. That's real. That's what's going on. So just an understanding of Galilee um, and the angel saying, there you will see him. Verse 8, and they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to his disciples. Verse 9, and behold, um, Jesus met them and greeted them. So these Mary Magdalene and this other Mary, they just heard from this angel that he is not there, that he has risen um, from the dead and that he has gone ahead of them to Galilee. So they are running back just it says with fear and great joy, just in this amazement, not even knowing how to handle these emotions or what to say or what to think, but they run quickly to tell the disciples that Jesus has risen from the dead. And as they are going in this such joy and fear, amazement, all of this, just with this mission to tell them, then it says that Jesus meets them. Jesus greets them. Um, Behold, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. I love this understanding, going back to Mary Magdalene and, and her just staying at the feet of Jesus and anointing the feet of Jesus. This whole, this whole thing now where Jesus meets them, greets them, and, and says that they took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Now it says they. But when we jump over to Mark, we'll see that that this emphasis, this focus was on Mary Magdalene at this time of her um, being there um, at the feet of Jesus. So beautiful, powerful. I can't imagine just her there and worshiping and just all over those feet that she anointed. And now he is alive and, and greeting them and with them in person. Just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Verse 10, then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee and there they will see me. So Jesus speaks just what the angel said. So this is so, this is so personal. This is so Jesus. So Jesus did not have to meet them and greet them. They were already told, they were already given this message by the angel. The angel told them these exact words. You'll see him in Galilee. Go tell the disciples. Jesus then just chose, just just out of the love and compassion, the desire of his heart to just meet these women, to, to greet them and tell them the exact same message that they were already told. He says, don't be afraid. Go, go tell the brethren, go tell the disciples, you know, that I have risen, that I'm alive and tell them to leave for Galilee because Jesus had spoken that he was going to go ahead of them um, to Galilee. So he tells them, Tell them, the disciples, to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. Okay, through all this then, as Jesus is, is um, making himself so real and present to these, these beautiful women and giving them this message to tell the disciples to meet them there, then something else goes down. So verse 11, now while they were on their way, so as they're running back to talk to the disciples, while they're on their way, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priest all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers. So they're giving these soldiers who were at the tomb that day guarding it because they wanted it, you know, completely guarded. Remember that whole ordeal and saying, look, Jesus said that he was going to rise again you know, after three days, and so let's guard the tomb so the disciples don't come and steal the body and take it away, and then, then, then we're doomed. Then, then the, the, there'll be even more talk, and Jesus will be more popular, and and all of this. So they're guarding Jesus' tomb, like soldiers were there. So these soldiers were given tons of money, and and told, hey, we're gonna give you this money so that you give this story. And let people know that while you fell asleep, the disciples came and stole the body. So 
that's what they did. They received this money and that rumor then was spread to, you know, to keep people from talking, to keep this, this miracle from happening so that Jesus again wouldn't steal their thunder, which Jesus controls thunder. So he's going to be stealing all he wants anyway. Okay. So verse 15, it says, and they took the money and did as they had been instructed. And this story was widely spread among the Jews and is to this day. Verse 16, but the 11 disciples, remember 11 because Judas was no longer, um, but the 11 disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. Now, this is a trip from, from Jerusalem to Galilee. It's a trip. So they proceed to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority. Uh, yeah, he just raised from the dead. Like he has authority over death. And they see this. They know this, that he, he is presenting himself. They are seeing Jesus alive, resurrected right before them. And Jesus is speaking, I've got all authority. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Then he says, go therefore. He says, I've got this authority, so hear me out. So listen to me because this authority that I have, I'm giving you. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus says, I have authority. So listen up, go, he says, go and make disciples of all the nations. So go make disciples, baptize them, teach them to observe all that I commanded. Make disciples. We're making disciples by living this life of discipline out ourselves. Just being authentic to make disciples. There's got to be a real passion, real drive, real connection with with the Lord himself. As we make disciples, it's got to be a real thing in us that we are being discipled, that we are full of discipline, that we, it's all about discipleship. And we're going out making disciples by speaking, by preaching, by giving the gospel, by sharing the love of God. And we are to go make disciples, not just sit around, but we're to go out and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe. Love this. This whole idea of discipleship. This is training. This isn't just preaching at them. This is walking them through. This is doing life with them. This is what Jesus is calling us out to do. That, that what the Lord has spoken to us, what he has put within us, and what we know, we are to go out and teach. Not just say, hey, listen to what I know. Listen to all this this, this knowledge, see how great I am, see what I've learned, see what I've got. You just listen to me and then you go out and do. No, it's, hey, let's walk alongside each other and let's get an understanding, a, a crazy strong grasp of what truly is real, of what walking out and living connected to the Lord really looks like, really is, what it means. Let's train people. Let's help people. Let's, let's help them know how to walk through the word of God. Let's help them just, just be, be, I'm fully aware of the power of prayer and just what that looks like and how there's freedom in that, that it doesn't have to be this, this self-righteous, all these right, eloquent, eloquent words. It's talking to God, just hanging with God, that this is teaching them to observe. And this word observe is the, the original translation of this. The original context in this is to keep from escaping, teach them to keep from escaping all that I command you. Let's Let's teach them to hide it in their heart, to not just listen and go on their way, but to hide it in their heart and let it change them. Let it transform them. This is, this is the great commission. This is what Jesus is calling them out to do. This, this is it. His, his final words, this final assignment that he is speaking to them, giving this to us and saying, go make disciples, baptize them, teach them. Teach them to keep things hidden in their heart. Teach them to walk this thing out in the most real, beautiful, powerful kind of way. And Jesus having all authority speaking this to us, just that, just empowering us, knowing that he is our resurrected king who loves us, who's speaking to us, who meets with us, 
Therefore, we need to go out and share and teach other people to be drawn in, to respond to this invitation of Jesus pursuing them as well. Let's teach, let's train, let's speak, let's be real, let's love, let's just do life with others. At the end of verse 20, love, why not? Why not have the most beautiful ending to this chapter, this 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 book even, this book of Matthew, um, the first book in the Bible, the first of the gospels that's written out of the life of Jesus. Why in the world not end with something this powerful? Where Jesus says, and lo, I am with you always. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Always. He never leaves us. He is always, always with you. And he speaks that personally, directly to us. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So beautiful. That's something. That is something to hold on to, to never forget to treasure in our hearts. Okay, let's jump to Mark uh, chapter 16. Same way in starting, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might come and anoint him. Love this understanding. Again, we hit it in Matthew, but Mary Magdalene being the one who anointed the feet of Jesus with that costly perfume of nard where the disciples couldn't believe that she was wasting that kind of money. And Jesus said, um, we're going to honor her today. That, that no matter how many years pass by, she is going to be known. She is going to be remembered. What she is doing now and preparing my body for burial. That's what Mary did. That's what Jesus spoke about her. That's what she was doing at his feet with that costly perfume, pouring it on his feet, over his head, anointing his body, preparing him for burial. And now we see that she, along with the other Mary, is coming. They bought spices and they are coming to anoint him. Mary Magdalene is this woman who passionately desires to just be with her Jesus, to be with her Savior. She knows, she is fully aware of how Jesus delivered her, of what Jesus did for her, and she is all about just being with him. So we see that she and this other Mary um, has these spices. They are going to the tomb where Jesus was buried to anoint him. Verse two, very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. They were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? So this is what I love. They came to the tomb. They're walking, they're moving towards the tomb. Then it says that they were saying to one another, trying to figure out how to get to Jesus. Like I can see them walking along to the tomb and saying, okay, How are we going to do this? When we get here, how are we going to roll the stone away so that we can anoint Jesus, so that we can go in and anoint and honor and honor our Lord? How are we going to do this? So they're trying to figure this out. But in this, in trying to figure it out, they're not sitting at home trying to figure this out. They're not sitting at home coming up with a plan and writing out pros and cons and, and here's plan A and plan B. And if this doesn't work, how are we going to get the, you know, this stone away? They're not sitting back in their house trying to figure it out. They're walking. They're moving forward. They're, they're just going with it. They're, they're staying focused. They're saying, okay, we're just going to walk. We're going we're gonna to trust. But, you know, let's try to, let's talk this through and see, see what, what's going to happen. Love this. In verse, um, in verse 4, as they're, they're saying this to one another, trying to figure this out, okay, how is this going to work? They're still moving along. Then in verse 4, looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away although it was extremely large. So they're trying to figure out how to get to Jesus. And as they're walking in obedience, not slowing down, not being reluctant, not hesitating, like, oh no, we're freaking out because we don't know what to do. But in that, the way they realized, they saw as they're walking there and get there, they realized that the way was already made for them. It, it It was already made as they continued moving forward. So in their obedience and walking forward and not being held back by fear or the unknown, they're walking and they look up and they see, hey, it's already done. The stone has already been rolled away. That's how Jesus works. If we're committed and we're saying, okay, Lord, I don't know what's gonna happen when we get there, but but I'll figure that out when I get there. I'm just gonna keep walking. I'm gonna keep moving. I'm gonna be obedient. I'm gonna trust that you're gonna show me the way. You're gonna make a way. You're gonna be my way because he is the way the truth and the life and when we walk in 
in that, in that obedience, just going after the Lord, we can be assured that the way will be made. So they look up, they see the stone already rolled away. Verse five, entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe, and they were amazed. Now in Matthew, we see that this angel was sitting on top of the stone. And here we see an angel who is sitting at the right inside the tomb. Verse six, and he said to them, do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, here is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Again, as we read in Matthew, uh, Matthew 26, 32, Jesus spoke this and he said, but after I am raised, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. So this angel says, go tell the disciples, tell them that he's gone ahead of you to Galilee. Verse eight, they went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment had gripped them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Verse nine, now after he had risen early on the first day of the week, he first appeared to Mary Magdalene from whom he had cast out seven demons. Love this. Jesus appeared first before anyone else to Mary Magdalene. Now, we do know a whole bunch about Mary Magdalene. Again, as we said, as we were going through Matthew, that, that Mary Magdalene is all over the New Testament. We see how close she is, that she's always present. We saw her role in just when Jesus was being crucified, that she saw she was one looking on in a distance. She was there following after. She was probably one of the ones mourning, weeping. I'm pretty sure they said the Mary behind. I'm not sure, but we just know that she was present. She was just constantly going after and being close to Jesus. We saw in Luke 8 and even here where it says Mary Magdalene from whom he had cast out seven demons. We saw that in Luke um, 8 as well that it spoke that Mary Magdalene, the one that Jesus cast out seven demons. So we know that this woman, she she was an immoral woman. She lived, she had a past. She had a past on her. Again, we know that even when she anointed the feet of Jesus, the disciples were speaking if he knew this woman, if he knew what she, what she did, what her past looks like, all the things that she got into, Jesus wouldn't be doing this. So we know this about Mary. We know that Jesus delivered her from those, casting out these demons in her. And then in Luke 7, so beautiful, this passage, where she is anointing the feet of Jesus. And Jesus just honors her like crazy and speaks this phrase about her and saying, because she was forgiven much, because her sin was a lot. Jesus didn't deny it. He said, this woman has a lot of sin in her past. This woman has done a lot of things. Her sin is great, but she has been forgiven in that. And because how great her sin was, she has been forgiven for much, for so, so much. The, the amount of this forgiveness, what she felt, that she felt how, how it was heavy. It was this heavy weight of sin turned into the heavy weight of, of his glory, the weight of his glory pouring upon her. And she felt that forgiveness. She was forgiven by and from much. And because of that, she loves much. And Jesus spoke that. Jesus spoke that in saying, look, I entered into your house and you did nothing for me. And look what this woman has done. Because of what I delivered her from, because of how I touched her life, healed her life, because of what I've done in her life, that's how she can love me much. That's why she's at my feet. That's why she is anointing me. That's why she remains close to me. In this, it's not that he came to or he chose to reveal himself or, or be um, before one, um, first appearing to one who is this super spiritual and, and has had just a, a perfect, you know, perfect appearing life and one who doesn't have a really crazy past and and he didn't he didn't hit up one who is known to be a great wonderful clean person he appeared to mary magdalene who knew that she had a past who knew her sin was great and who knew her need for her savior and she walked with him she followed hard passionately after him she sought after him hard. And this woman who we know so much about, who started off with in such sin, 
in such filth and how Jesus brought her to where she was and seeing she claimed her position so in, in such a solid way that her position, her permanent position was going to be at the feet of Jesus. That's where, that's where you would find Mary Magdalene going after him. And Jesus chose to appear first to Mary Magdalene, to this Mary who loved him deeply, who was overwhelmed with gratefulness, who, who would never forget what he brought her from, what, how he brought her out, how he drew her close to himself. Okay, verse 10. She went and reported to those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. So still mourning over this loss of Jesus and missing him. She comes and reports, hey, why are we weeping? He's alive. He, he, he um, appeared to me that he is alive and well, that he is risen from the dead. Verse 11, when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they refused to believe it. They refused to believe it. Now in this, until the end of the chapter, we hear this word belief. It's this push for belief. You would think that we were reading the book of John because this word believe is all over the rest of this chapter. So it says they refused to believe it. Verse 12, after that, he appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking along on their way to the country. They went away and reported it to the others, but they did not believe them either. Afterward, he appeared to the 11 themselves as they were reclining at the table and he reproached them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. Verse 15, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. Now, this, he who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. This is not saying that we have to be baptized to be saved. That is not a sign of salvation. When we believe, when we receive Jesus as Lord in our life, we are saved right then and there. This baptism and being baptized then should follow after. It should carry on, but it is not an indicator whether we are saved or not. What this says, this push is on believing. So he was believed and has been baptized. So this is this understanding of putting it into practice or being immersed in belief, living that belief out, truly living in, in the way that we say we believe and what we believe and why we believe things, this immersion of belief. Then, but he who has disbelieved, he who does not believe, he was walking around talking it right and saying all the right things and doing all the right things, but deep down inside, they don't believe. They, they just, they, they're not believing. And in that disbelief, he who disbelieves shall be condemned, it says. Verse 17, these signs will accompany those who have believed in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This is a power. That's these For those who believe, these things they will do. These things they will be immersed in doing in just a natural way from being, from believing. And in, in that pursuit of, of even more belief and believing and going after more and more and believing that there is more, these things they will, they will do. Verse 19, so then when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the signs that Followed. So we see Jesus ascending into heaven, and then it says that they go out and preach everywhere. So we see up in verse 15, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So we get this understanding, this, this grasp on this, tri this chapter, that by teaching, by preaching, by studying, by seeking, we believe. We see from that as we dive into the word, as we study, as we seek, as, we, as we're teaching and preaching, as Jesus says to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Go make disciples. In this, as we're doing that, in order to do that, to be real and authentic in that, we've got to study. It's got to be real ourselves. And in that, in that journey, 
in that seeking, we see, we believe. As we go after the Lord, he reveals himself to us. And we are strengthened in that, in what we see, in what we are continuing to believe in. And then doing these, these signs of what follows, this fruit that comes from that. Again, so then when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God, ascending into heaven, and they went out. And they preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the words by the signs that followed his power and authority through the blood and in his name. That's how they went out. That's the authority and the power that they went out with. Guys, seriously, his resurrection power, he is still speaking to us, go and preach the gospel. Go out and make disciples. Go teach and preach. Go, go. Go teach them and train them and, and be a part of this and do life with them and just be real. Just be real and keep seeking me. Keep running after me. Keep believing and keep living our lives in such a real radical way that truly proves, reveals that we believe. Okay. Thanks so much for walking this out with me. Um, in our next video, we're going to hit more of... Um, these other accounts of the resurrection of Jesus that we will find in Luke and John. So yes, let's keep moving. Let's keep pressing in. Excited for more. Thanks so much. See you soon.